A huge change in the Walt Disney Company's leadership, a classic attraction closing for refurbishment. There's a lot coming to the Disney parks, and it's all up next. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. This has been a crazy week to be a Disney fan. Bob Iger announced that he will no longer be the CEO of the Walt Disney Company, but we're also seeing a lot of construction going on in Disney World right now for the 50th anniversary coming up. We're talking about Cinderella Castle, Spaceship Earth has also been confirmed to be going down soon for its own refurbishment, and lots more. So let's jump into that Bob Iger news. Bobby I has stepped down as CEO and he announced he was officially stepping down on February 25th, effective immediately. He will be assuming a new role as executive chairman until the end of his contract in 2021. Bob Chapek, who worked formerly as the chairman of Disney Parks Experiences and Products, has been picked as the new CEO for the company. Iger said he believes stepping down and letting a new CEO come in after the successful launch of Disney Plus and the purchase of 21st Century Fox was the best course of action. No word on why the departure was so sudden, but it does seem there will be a lengthy transition period. Okay, a new Disney dining plan has been announced. Disney World's just announced a fourth dining plan option to add onto your resort reservation, Disney Dining Plan Plus. The dining plan is a way to prepay for your meals ahead of your trip, and depending on which tier you book, you'll receive meal and snack credits to use during your trip. This new plan's not as restrictive as the quick service and standard dining plans, but not as indulgent as the deluxe dining plan. You receive two meal credits per day to be used at any restaurant of your choosing, which gives you a lot more flexibility, along with two snack credits and a refillable mug. Pricing for this comes out to $95.61 per adult per day and $35.01 per child, three to nine per day. Headed over to Park News, Spaceship Earth. We've got a closing date, my friends. As part of the ongoing Epcot transformation, Spaceship Earth will be closing on May 26th, 2020 to begin that significant refurbishment. We know from last year's D23 Expo that the refurbishment will drastically change the theme of the attraction to focus on storytelling with new effects, scenes, and narration to help get this new message across. According to permits, Disney has hired the Whiting Turner Contracting Company, who also worked extensively on Galaxy's Edge and Frozen Ever After, and they'll be doing the principal work on the refurb. We can also see that the permit has an expiration date of December 31st, 2022, almost three years from the permit originally being filed. There's currently no telling how long this refurb will last, but big ride overhauls can be lengthy. So as always, we'll keep you updated on the latest. All right, next up, Cinderella Castle will remain uncovered during the refurbishment. We mentioned in our last news video that Cinderella Castle in Magic Kingdom will be getting a refurbishment soon. It's expected to last through the summer, but now we know that the castle will actually not be completely covered up by a scrim during the construction. That's what happened over in Disneyland during Project Stardust. So that means you can still get those great castle picks. Temporary construction equipment will be in use around the castle, but you will still be able to take photos of the castle and dine at Cinderella royal table and take part at Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique during the refurbishment. The Flower and Garden Festival menus have been released. The full menus for all of the Flower and Garden food booths for Epcot have been released. From March 4th to June 1st, you'll be able to visit the 16 food booths for this year, including returning favorite Citrus Blossom and the Honey Bistro. In addition, you'll be able to find some specialty items at other locations around the park, like Block and Hans and the American Pavilion and the Refreshment Port. All of the menus are on DisneyFoodBlog.com or pick up our DFB guide to the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival to plan your trip you can find that over at dfbstore.com also if you're a disneylander we've got the menus for the disney california adventure food and wine festival along with handy and free printables over on disneyfoodblog.com with all the menus this festival started yesterday and continues through april 21st so you can check out our best of the fest on disneyfoodblog.com Speaking of Food & Wine Festival, let's head back over to Epcot and talk about the Epcot Food & Wine Festival. We've got two performers for the Eat to the Beat concerts announced. Even though we don't have official dates yet for the Epcot Food & Wine Festival, we already know two of the performers for the Eat to the Beat concert series. Tiffany is scheduled to perform on November 15th, and Taylor Dane's schedule says she will be performing on October 9th and 10th. 
Now, everything is subject to change, but we do keep an eye on these performers' schedules when we know they might be coming back to eat to the beat. Disney Food Blog is, of course, your Epcot Festival headquarters, so stay tuned for more announcements. And if you want to get a jump on planning, you can pre-order our 2020 guide to the Epcot Food and Wine Festival as well. You can get that one on dfbstore.com. And don't forget to use code YouTube for a discount. All right, tickets and dessert party reservations for Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party in the Magic Kingdom are available now. We're not even in March yet, but you are ready to plan your Halloween party adventures. The special ticketed event will run on select nights from August to November, and tickets have gone up slightly since last year, $6 across all tickets. You can also make your reservations for the Not-So-Spooky Spectacular Dessert Party at Tomorrowland Terrace or with Plaza Garden Viewing Online right now. You'll get special fireworks viewing in addition to all you can eat snacks and drinks. If you're 21 and over, you can also order beer and wine. That's new this year. You can purchase your tickets online at Disney World's website. We recommend purchasing them in advance as it'll save you a few bucks and you don't need to worry about the event selling out on those special days. Over in Hollywood Studios, two meet and greets have become seasonal. Two of our favorite Pixar characters won't be greeting guests for the time being at Hollywood Studios. Frozone and Bo Peep have become seasonal character meet and greets, but hopefully they won't stay away for too long. Be sure to check that times guide or ask a cast member if they're greeting while you're there. And the Mickey Shorts Theater is opening next week. It'll be opening the same day as Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway on March 4th. You'll be able to watch a ton of Mickey shorts here before you go live for one yourself, including an all-new cartoon called Vacation Fun. You'll also be able to snap some special photo opportunities after the show with cartoon backdrops and props. And Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, speaking of that brand new ride, it is now on the Play Disney Parks app. So starting on March 4th, you'll be able to quiz yourself about all things cartoon with the Mickey and Minnie's Trivia Time Mouse Rules Apply game on the Play Disney Parks app. The game will come with five trivia packs. Some will be automatically available and you'll only be able to unlock the others by riding Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and watching the new Vacation Fun cartoon at the Mickey Shorts Theater. All right, we're headed over to Disneyland now. Avengers Stunt Show at California Adventure. We've got the details. The first phase of Avengers Campus will open this summer, and we got some more details about which characters will appear in this stunt show in the new land. You'll be able to watch Captain America, Black Widow, Spider-Man, and Black Panther use their trademark super heroics to fight a sword-wielding enemy on the rooftops of Avengers Campus. The casting call for stunt performers to fill these roles states they must be proficient in hand-to-hand -hand combat, acrobatics, tumbling and repelling. It looks like whoever will play Spider-Man will be doing some parkour as well, according to the casting call, so they gotta be pretty fancy. Indiana Jones Adventure Annual Pass Holder After Hours are happening. Disneyland Annual Pass Holders are getting that exclusive access to another attraction. You guys will be able to ride the Indiana Jones Adventure after regular park hours on March 4th and March 5th. We don't have too many details. Disneyland has offered this after hours access for other rides in the past, though, so it'll probably follow along those same lines. All right, time to dive into snack news and food news. Milk Stand is now going to be serving breakfast. So the Milk Stand in Galaxy's Edge at Hollywood Studios is getting some new breakfast items for your morning excursions to Batu. You'll be able to grab a green milk bread pudding for $6.49 and a Saka Farm egg bite that comes with spicy tomato sauce, crumbled feta, and garlic bread crumbs for $6.99. They'll also have the new plant-based option, the Wamba Yogurt Cup, that's made from plant-based coconut milk yogurt, green milk, and seasonal fruit for $6.49. As soon as these new eats make it to the park, we'll have a full review on the blog. The Bee Cupcake. We spotted a brand new Bee Cupcake at Dino Bite Snacks in Animal Kingdom. This is an orange cake filled with honey flavored custard that's been topped with buttercream, white chocolate honeycomb, and bees made of sugar. The sweet orange and honey flavors blended really well together for us, but the bees are very, very, very sweet. You can try it for yourself for $5.99 or a DDP snack credit. And there's a new vegan blackberry cupcake at Sunshine Seasons in Epcot right now. This one is vanilla cake, vegan buttercream frosting, and blackberry filling. The whole thing is topped with Mickey sprinkles and a single blackberry. The blackberry flavor was mostly what we got, but we love that it's a little different from the standard cupcake. The vegan buttercream was fluffy and the blackberry filling had an almost jelly-like consistency to it. You can snag one of these for $5.59 or a Disney Dining Plan snack credit. The chocolate caramel brownie is new at Kringla Bakery in the Norway Pavilion at Epcot, and it is exactly what it sounds like. Super rich and fudgy, and the caramel drizzle was a bit overpowered by the brownie, but this is definitely one for chocolate lovers. Plus, it's big and really shareable. This one's $5.99. 
All right, let's talk about that Candy Shop Sunday. The Candy Shop Sunday is over at Uva Bar and Cafe in downtown Disney in Disneyland. The Sunday's got vanilla ice cream, whipped cream, pop rocks. It's drizzled with a strawberry sauce, and it's all surrounded by a giant fluff ball of Jolly Rancher cotton candy. Super cute, super fun. Not really all that special, except for that it's got a big cotton candy cloud around it. You can get this one for 10 bucks, so it's a pretty decent price. Also in Disneyland, berry cheesecake fritters are brand new over at Royal Street Veranda in New Orleans Square. These include real slices of strawberry, everything's deep fried, topped with powdered sugar, and there's cheesecake frosting dip on the side. You can find them for $5.49. There's a new specialty skewer over at Bengal Barbecue. In Adventureland in Disneyland, this one's gonna be shrimp, spiced ham, and pineapple covered with pina colada dressing. While we didn't pick up much flavor from the dressing, we definitely tasted those delicious grill flavors on the shrimp. And the, well, spiced ham, it's pretty much spam, right? And pineapple. The seasonal skewer is $6.49. We also found a brand new set of snacks over at Tropical Hideaway. The PB&J Mochi is filled with creamy peanut butter and topped with raspberry sauce and peanut butter dust. The mochi themselves are light and fluffy and the strawberry drizzle adds a sweetness to that whole package. You can find this unique snack for $6.99. There's also a brand new Lumpia. So you know it used to be the pineapple Lumpia, well now it's the banana jackfruit Lumpia. It's replaced the pineapple Lumpia at Tropical Hideaway for the time being. We don't know if pineapple is going to be coming back, but right now, banana jackfruit is all they have. So these are covered in a caramel sauce. We didn't get much of the jackfruit flavor, but the banana and caramel sauce were a nice balance of flavors that ultimately wasn't as sweet as the pineapple lumpia. You'll get two of these for $6.99. And there's a snickerdoodle milkshake over there in Disney California Adventure. This one, of course, is at Smoke Jumpers Grill. They always have those interesting milkshakes. I love the ones where they have some sort of crumble inside. This one's mixed with vanilla ice cream, snickerdoodle cake pieces, and topped with whipped cream and cinnamon sugar frosting. You can snag this one for $6.49. Now here's a couple of overall pieces of Disney food news. Disney and Pixar ice cream are now available. You'll be able to find new Disney and Pixar flavors at your local grocery store to bring the magic of Disney food home. We spotted all these at Publix, but hopefully they're hitting other stores too. Mickey's got a classic vanilla and fudge option for $6.29. You can also get Mickey and Minnie party cups that come with five vanilla and five chocolate cups for $7.99. We also spotted a Monsters Inc. cookies and scream tub with vanilla ice cream cream chocolate cookie pieces, fudge swirl, and Mike and Sully chocolate chunks, and a Jack Jack cookie crumble inspired by the Incredibles with chocolate and vanilla light ice cream, chocolate cookie swirl, and chocolate mask pieces for $6.29 each. And finally, on the food front, Disney and Impossible Foods team up. Disney's officially announced they'll be teaming up with Impossible Foods to make the Impossible Burger the preferred plant-based burger of the Disney Parks and Disney Cruise Line. We're already seeing Impossible Foods products in the parks, like the Impossible Meatball Submarine for Disney California Adventures Food and Wine Festival, and the Impossible Farmhouse Meatball that will be at Epcot's Flower and Garden Festival. All right, let's go into merchandise news. We've got a Steamboat Mini popcorn bucket. The super adorable Steamboat Mini has appeared in Disney World with one big difference from its Disneyland counterpart. There's no annual pass holder exclusive stamp on the back. The bucket's fair game for everyone at $16. And to sweeten the deal, we even spotted the super popular Steamboat Mickey bucket along with the mini bucket in the Magic Kingdom. Mary Blair inspired popcorn boxes have hit the parks. Disney's paying tribute to this legendary Imagineer on these new popcorn boxes in Disney World. We found ours at Maurice's amazing popcorn machine in Magic Kingdom, and we're seeing them pop up in some other locations as well. It's a collage of bright colors, gonna remind you of It's a Small World, which of course Blair is famous for crafting the design for. The popcorn bucket is $12, but you can also get $2 refills on popcorn with this one. And we've got some amazing new ears, you guys. I love these, the Mickey balloon ears. They were finally spotted in Disneyland at Mad Hatter's and they started to go really quickly. These are actually Mickey balloons that come inside of these acrylic casings. Not only that, but they light up. You can get one for $32.48 ASAP before they all get snatched up. Now we've also seen a brand new set of ABC Disney coffee mugs. These are super cute. We found them in the Magic Kingdom's Emporium and they feature designs inspired by the Disney parks and attractions for every letter of the alphabet from A to Z. We've seen mugs that are based on the Haunted Mansion, Soarin' Around the World, the Dapper Dan's, Orange Bird, and more. Each mug costs $14.99. You can see what every letter looks like at DisneyFoodBlog.com. There's a brand new Her Universe collection featuring Cinderella. Her Universe 
Paris has launched a new line of apparel to celebrate that 70th anniversary. You're going to find dresses, a varsity striped t-shirt, and a tank top all inspired by the film. Most of the collection is even available in plus sizes, so you can see the full lineup on DisneyFoodBlog.com. We've got a bunch of flower and garden festival merch from Epcot to share with you, including the annual pass holder magnets for this festival. Now you can pick these up at Mouse Gear as always. One of the magnets features Donald Duck and Spike the Bee celebrating together, while the other magnet features the Orange Bird. Annual pass holders can pick up the Donald magnet from March 4th to April 19th and the Orange Bird magnet from April 20th to June 1st. There are also brand new flower and garden sippers, so the Orange Bird sipper from last year's event is going to be back at the Citrus Blossom this year. This one was super popular, so get ready to wait in line. And you'll also be able to find a souvenir sipper based on Spike the Bee at Honey Bistro. You'll also be able to pick up the sipper with Honey Peach Freeze inside. And I do think there are some Spike the Bee sporks coming out as well. There's also a brand new flower and garden mini dress. We got a sneak peek of that dress. It's covered in flowers, Minnie's bows, and Minnie herself as she rides her bike through the springtime. All right, let's jump into Baby Yoda, you guys. We have a Baby Yoda merch invasion. We got some new looks at a ton of merchandise now available for pre-order and rolling into Shop Disney at some point featuring The Child. You can see all the new Baby Yoda gear on DisneyFoodBlog.com, but the ones that caught our eye include the Baby Yoda animatronic. It's an animatronic plush from Hasbro that will make over 25 sound and motion combinations just by patting the top of Baby Yoda's head. It's set to arrive sometime in the fall of this year, and you can pre-order him now for $59.99. There's also a Baby Yoda talking plush. This one's from Hasbro as well. And this little guy's gonna make cute noises and sounds when you squeeze him. He'll also come with an alien frog and a bone broth bowl. That Baby Yoda Build-A-Bear, we can finally confirm it'll look like the same Baby Yoda we know and love. We still don't know how much he'll cost or when exactly we can get our hands on him, but he is coming soon. And there's a Baby Yoda Lounge Fly backpack. If you want to carry him with you on the go, you'll be able to with this brand new The Child backpack in just a few months. The 50-year-old baby will hitch a ride on the back of the bag that's inspired by his carrier egg from the show. And Love Your Melon has adorable Mandalorian beanies. If you need to get your Baby Yoda fix right now, Love Your Melon has a new line of Mandalorian beanies on their website. You can get one inspired by the big bad bounty hunter himself or go with the pale green child beanies. They have beanies for adults and children with pom-poms or without that range in the $35 to $55 price range. These are great. It's a wonderful cause. If you like them at all, go pick them up and support this wonderful organization. And of course, there's that Baby Yoda Spirit jersey. If you're in downtown Disney, you can also pick up this Youth Spirit jersey at World of Disney. Our little green friend is featured on the front with the child in big bold letters on the back. Get one of these for your kiddo for $49.99. In Cruise Line news, we've got ports announced for summer 2021 cruises. Disney Cruise Line has announced their ports of call that include Spain, Greece, French Riviera, Croatia, and Sweden. In addition, from late July through September, you're going to be able to set sail for the British Isles, Northern Europe, the Baltic, Iceland, and Norway. Premium cruise packages have also been announced. If you want to plus up your cruise, you'll be able to select from two brand new packages. The premium cruise package can be booked for select 2021 itineraries, and you'll be led by adventure guides on the ship and at port to experience some one-of-a-kind activities like getting a chance to talk with Walt Disney Theater cast members. If you're booking a European cruise, you can add an Adventures by Disney vacation before you set sail as well. These two to three night trips will see you exploring cities like London and Barcelona to dive into the culture. There's also a Disney Wonder NOLA shirt. So Disney designed exclusive Disney Wonder shirts for the maiden voyages out of its new home port of New Orleans that sold out in the first two cruises. The design incorporates a lot of gold and black colors as well as iconography like the Florida Lee crowns and the Disney Wonder itself. If you see this one on your cruise, it's going to be $39.99. And finally, a couple of general pieces of news. There's a new chocolate workshop coming to Riviera Resort beginning in March. Riviera is going to offer a brand new workshop for chocoholics at 11 a.m. on Sundays. It's going to be hosted by a chocolatier from the Ganachery where guests will learn how to taste chocolate and make their own truffle pop. Tickets are 60 bucks plus tax per person, and you can call 407-WDW-PLAY to make reservations. Finally, Lululemon is coming to Disney Springs. Yep, Lululemon will be opening a store in Disney Springs sometime in 2020, so you can get some high-end athletic apparel that's perfect for jogging or resort hopping. We're going to keep you updated when we get more details like an official opening date. 
So there we go. There's all the latest news for Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, and the Walt Disney Company. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to head over to dfbstore.com. Pick up your guidebooks. We pour our hearts and souls into those. It's everything we know. And don't forget to use code YouTube for a discount. We thank you so much for your support of our channel. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.